Hey, it's the venerable 1625. Freddie Green style chords. Let's check it out. Let's see what's up. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to do this in a not very jazz like key of G major today, but it's a very guitar like key. Um, first, I think I'm going to do this extremely diatonically to the key of G. So I'm going to have a G chord and an E minor chord and an A minor chord and a D chord, D7 chord. And they're all going to have three notes in them. So the G chord, I'm going to play G6, which some people might view and see as an E minor chord, and they would not be wrong. G on the third fret of the low E string, and then D on the second fret of the fourth string, and then B on the fourth fret of the G string. And I'm going to just pulse this. And what you'll note is that the underside of my of my first finger is um let's just go back to that the underside of my first finger or middle finger sorry is muting the a string there's a lot of muting of the strings going on come back to me focus come back come back come back there we go is um is there's a lot of of strings being muted because i'm only th playing three strings so there i'm playing the sixth string and my underneath my middle finger is is muting the a string and i'm also muting the a string with the tip of my index finger so it, i get a good solid mute and then my fourth finger is going to sound the g string and it's also leaning over on the b string so as to mute it as well as this first finger is leaning over on the b string to mute it and my index finger is also muting that first is muting that first string i think that's the only one i've only got one finger muting and it probably is less important because you can see over here just barely in the dark i'm not really striking the first string because i really only need to strike these bottom four strings the first thing is just to get that clean I'm playing it with my thumb, but I could play it with a pick. I guess I was honoring Wes Montgomery. And now I'm going to move through some of the other chords. So the next chord I'm going to choose for my sixth chord is my E minor seven. It's the sixth in G major because we got G, A, B, C, D, E, or one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six minor seventh. So now I've got my first finger at the fifth fret of the D and my third finger at the seventh fret of the A and my fourth finger at the seventh fret of the G string. Your fingers may vary. Oh my gosh, look what I did with my hands. Such naughty no-nos. I'm putting the thumb over the top of the neck and I'm um, and I'm, oh, I'm not quite palming the neck. You'll see like I still have the palm open in there, but but I'm doing all this to mute these other strings. I've got my index finger muting the B and E string and my thumb and my middle finger are muting the low E string. Oh, you hear the B string popping out there. I'll give that with the thumb. Oh, so nice. I'm just pulsing it. I'm releasing the pressure. When I say pulsing it, I'm releasing the pressure on the string, but I'm not taking the fingers off of the strings. Let's come in a little closer. Yeah, because we're just going to need about that much of the neck. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go G. G, E minor, and now I'm going to go A minor seventh. So I'll use my fourth finger as a guide down the third string. So I slide down this third string on my fourth finger and then place my third finger on the uh, fifth fret of the D string and my middle finger on the fifth fret of the A of the low E. And again, index fingers muting these higher strings down here. 
So there's my two chord because G in the key of G, one, two, it's a two minor. I'm not going to go deep into the theory today for time's sake. And just work on pulsing that clean. Putting a little accent on the two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three. This, this guitar has, um, these are uh, flat wound strings, so there's a little bit of less uh, buzz sound when you're moving your fingers, string buzz when you're moving your fingers around and also when you're releasing. So when you're playing on, on wounds, on round wound strings, you just have to be pretty abrupt in how you're releasing your pulse. So as not to have too much string, re uh, string buzz when you release. And then finally, I'll I think I'll show you a little bit on around, some wound round strings in a second to the D7. And let's just look how I'm doing this. In order to do this, I'm just going to slide these two fingers across. Whoop, whoop. So my middle finger, or my ring finger, sorry, was on the D string. And now I'm going to bring it over to the G string at the fourth fret, fifth fret, apologies. And I'm going to bring my middle finger one fret, one string over to the a, a string of the fifth fret to make my D7. There's lots of different fingerings you could use. This is one I'm using for right now because it's the transition is easy because I'm just going to drag those fingers across and my index finger is going to come here and play the fourth fret of the D string. One, two, oh, sorry. One, two. Uh, we're doing two beats each, so. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, G six, E minor seven, A minor seven, D seven. There are lots of variations on the one, six, two, five. Let's just take one. I'm going to I'm going to play this G6 still and I'm going to play E minor 7 still but now I'm going to play instead of A minor 7 I'm going to play A7 I'm going to make the third of this A chord major. And so with this particular fingering I'm going to play instead of having my fourth finger at the fifth fret of the G string I'm going to move it up to the sixth fret. And you can kind of notice it's uh, that I've actually got that fourth finger pretty flat, so it assists with the muting. You break lots of rules with this kind of guitar playing because it's not really guitar playing, it's kind of a cross between banjo playing and um, mandolin playing. These types of jazz guitars, arch tops, are basically giant mandolins with six strings. Huzzah! So now G6, E minor 7, A7, and it just changes one little melody, the top melody now, instead of going, it's going to go. Listen. So that is G6, E minor 7, A7, D7, Freddie Green style. Freddie Green was the guitar player in the uh, Basie band, the Count Basie band, famously famous with this style. Lots of lots of different variations and tunes and everything. Um, okay, I'm going to do one more variation. I'm going to make it a little bluesier. And start on a G7. So my tonic chord in the key is G7 as opposed to G6. It's a bluesy kind of bluesier kind of sound. And so I will now go G7. So instead of middle finger playing the third fret and index finger playing the second fret of the D and fourth finger, I'm going to use my ring finger now and play the third fret of the D string with my ring finger. So instead of this sound, this sound. G7. 
little bluesier. Now, I kept the A7. Finally, I'll make them all dominant seventh style chords. So I've got this G7, and I had the A7 and the D7. I'm going to make this an E7. So I'll make the same shape. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll make the same shape I have for the D7. So G7, E7, D7. Very kind of bluesy. Practice whichever flavor of this you enjoy and just get that to sound smooth. I, re I really enjoy just the very simple version. And maybe next week we'll come back and... Sorry, I was a little sloppy. Look at some other ways that you can play this one, six, two, five, or perhaps we'll look at another another chord progression. People refer to the, these changes as what they call jazz musicians call these changes rhythm changes because they're the main chord changes of "I Got Rhythm" by a Georgian Ira Gershwin, which is a famous jazz standard. Um, employed in many, 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 many tunes. And so jazz musicians will call just rhythm changes in all kinds of keys. Um, and today we looked at them in the key of G major because we are guitar players. But if you don't want to offend your uh, jazz playing friends, then you might want to try something like um, B flat. Okay, have fun. Bye.